Podcast. Hi everyone. Welcome to the I Don't Get It Podcast. Doo-doo. This is Naz. Lauren. Wake up. Doo-doo. And Ashley. Yeah. What do you guys say? Hey. Full house. Oh. That did not sound like Wake full house. Up. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. That was the morning show. Got it. Um I have an I don't <laughs> I have an I don't get it. What do you not get, Lauren? I actually it's not like an I don't get. It's like what do you think about this matter? Because when someone said, I don't know if Ashley's going to get this because she doesn't send memes, but Naz and I send memes to each other. All the time. All the time. I and think we, all, we only Yo, talk in memes. Oh, memes. I like GIFs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, GIFs. No. It GIFs. is GIFs. Yeah, I mean, it is spelled GIF, but then again, why is GIF the peanut butter? J I F. company. Um, okay, so if someone sends you a a meme you've seen before do you tell them you've seen it before or does that hurt their feelings well okay so i love that you're bringing this up because obviously that means that all the ones i've sent you you've already seen before no no but i know it's because you're just sitting at home going through instagram way more often than i I am am. i okay because um i have to send it to you it reminds me jack will send me memes and i won't tell him that i've seen them already but he said oh i saw that already last week i go that is so annoying (laughs) it's so rude that is annoying that's yeah you could have just faked Left. I wish I could send Ashley memes, but I know she'll never see it, so I'd never I send see you them memes. when you send them. Oh, you mean you, you at me? I see your DMs all the time. Oh, really? If I DM you, you'll yeah, see she'll it? see it because like, I follow you. Yeah. Oh, I literally have never sent you a meme in my <laughs> life. Ashley's about like, to get an influx of memes. So oh boring. no, I shouldn't have said that, <laughs> guys. That's so mean. No, no it's because I honestly, I think I probably saw all the memes too, and I'm just like, I just saw it. I got it. I know it's me. Whatever, guys. But I'm hold so on. over this. But I want I'm to go back kidding. to the GIF spelling. No. GIF would be with a J. GIF would be with a, a GIF would be with a G. GIF. That's GIF. No. Like a gift. Yeah, but the gift is a G-I-F-T. That I've it, had the same argument, then, but apparently yeah. it's like science GIF. computer talk. It's GIF. a GIF. It's computer talk. It's computer talk. It is a freaking GIF. Okay. All right. Well, everyone listening, today is kind of an exciting day because we oh, have... No, it's not a GIF. It's a GIF. Sorry. <laughs> it is a GIF. It's a GIF. It's a GIF. It's a GIF. Okay. That's it. All right. Okay, sorry. Continue. Today is kind of an exciting day because we have a real housewife coming on to the podcast. Royalty. Royalty is, among us. It is. It's pop culture royalty. Yeah. Her name is Siggy Flicker, and she is a real housewife of New Jersey. She was on last season and on this season, which just aired this week, actually. Um, but you guys are listening to this next week, so it aired last week for you. Yes. <laughs> uh, what's interesting is I've had multiple people try to set me up with this bitch. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's be this, this <laughs> uh, Yeah. No, like, seriously. At least two people have been like, oh, I really would love to put you in contact with Siggy and like not her publicist, but like one like writer for the Huffington Post was like, oh. I think she might have like really good feedback for you. Well, that makes sense because Siggy not only is a housewife, she is a relationship expert. She is a TV host. She is an author of many books. Um, one of her books is called Write Your Own Fairy Tale, I think it is. Oh, I like her already. Yeah, I, I feel like we're going to love her and be obsessed with her. And Lauren and Ashley and I just have a bunch of relationship questions Here to ask go. her. We're going to let it flow. Oh, but apparently she's a matchmaker, well, which is the yeah. big thing we should all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matchmakers. Don't know how I be- how much I believe in those things. Well, we hate Patty. But that's because of Patty. Yeah. yeah okay. She's the devil. <laughs> okay, okay. The I devil love, is she. I love her last name is Flicker. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's cool, but I just think... Well, fl- she's thinking Flicker like a, like a flame, and Lauren's thinking Flicker like a clit. Yeah. Wait, what? Like, yeah. come go flick your own bean. Yeah, I go flick your bean. Wait, people call the cooter a flicker? No, like another... you're gonna flick your bean. Yeah, flick. Guys, this is gross. Yeah, I, I, I don't like that either. But I knew that what she was thinking. Is that a Virginia thing or like an no. everyone thing? No, I just don't know about it. No. Nope. Yeah. All right, okay. well nope. let's let's give her a call and ask her a couple questions. I'm very excited. Wait, hold up, guys. I have to interrupt for a second. Lauren, where'd you get that shirt? I know. I got it on the tote. I wasn't sure this look you was going to... You got gonna... that on the tote. Yeah, I wasn't sure this look was going to look good on me. Because I, you know, I, like you, don't like to show my arms or anything. But I'm just trying it out. Because the beauty of the tote is I can wear it and then send it back. So you can rent things up to $700 worth of clothing from designer brands like Free People, Nike, Rebecca Minkoff, and more all month long. And 
the beauty is you can rent as many totes as you want a month and then you wear it, return it, and then repeat. So if you want a cute shirt like I'm wearing that you can't even see, <laughs> go to letote.com. That's L-E-T-O-T-E dot com to get started for as low as $59 a month. Enter promo code GETIT, G-E-T-I-T, at checkout with, to get a 50% off your first month. Once you sign up, you'll receive your complimentary customized tote within days. Wear what you want, return everything in the mail when you're done, and repeat all month long. Again, that's letote.com. Enter the code GETIT, G-E-T-I-T, and feel fabulous with fashion delivered right to your door. All right, let's get back to it. Ashley, would you ever want to be a housewife? No, because I don't like... <laughs> the reality star here is going to say, nah, because I don't like conflict. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't like fighting. I really don't like fighting in that show. It, I know, it's so much it's fighting. It's just fighting. It's a lot it's of drinking, too. And we don't drink weight. that much either. I think yeah. also when you're fighting, knowing this is just a TV show and like you're doing great, creating great content while you're getting in fights is fine. But I also feel like it's like real... I oh. think they they probably have animosity toward each other yeah. because of the staged like or for in particular New Jersey. I feel like is way less produced. And I'm gonna be honest, guys. I haven't watched it in a long time. I used to watch it like back in the day mm-hmm. when Teresa was like the housewife. Yeah. Um. But I felt like all the show was real. But it's probably because they were all kind of related. Yeah. That makes I feel sense. like New Jersey is the most calm, actually, which is very paradoxical like now? to what people would think it's the yeah. most common now okay yeah but i like, don't watch it now i i know i don't watch it at all but my mom used to watch new york housewives yeah i still mm-hmm. dabble in new york i like and, new york too yeah but all they do is bigger ramona is my spirit animal Ramona's my mom is obsessed with ramona she is hilarious all right let's all right. call up siggy siggy hello hello hi, hi. Hi, ladies. Oh, it's so good to talk to you. Siggy, thank you so much for coming on the I Don't Get It podcast. We love you. And Ashley's actually been told many times that she needs to meet you. So it's like crazy that we're meeting you like over the podcast now. Yes. Wait, wait, Ashley, why are you? Why do people tell you that? I don't know. You did an interview with somebody at the Huffington Post. I once did an interview with and she was like, you should do an interview with Siggy. And I'm like, oh, OK. Yes, Shira, Shira Weiss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Shira. Yeah. Wow. That's so weird. And then uh, Claire and Sammy have been on that podcast after when well, you weren't there that day or you weren't there anymore. Oh, that's oh, my God. They're the best. Claire and Sammy are the best. Yeah, I'm. I miss doing that. I I missed, 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 missed (laughs) those girls so much. Aww. Aww. Yeah, they're awesome. Well, I'm so excited because um, I know that you love Boca Raton and I'm from Boca, Siggy. So it's very exciting. Where are you from? Where are you in Boca? Um, I lived on Glades and 441. Okay, so I'm on Federal and um, Yamato. Amazing. Shout out to the 561. Um, Yep, baby. Yes, you're a Boca but, girl you're and right a Jersey by, girl. Right by like the bed and bath out there. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, you guys exactly. really know each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, so Siggy, obviously, we should talk about the elephant in the room. You're on a show that's on TV right now. You're a housewife. What is that like? Um, well, um, let me see. It's like being in a pressure cooker. Okay. Um, it's very, very intense this season, and um. You know, for the most part, um, you know, it's, 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 it is stressful, but I do love it. I do love it. Um, the show has given me a huge platform and, um, I got into it for all the right reasons. I have the most magnificent book out there. And it's so funny because somebody like yesterday's episode, the first thing, like we were in a restaurant and I went, people were needling me all night long about a certain topic. And I said, you know what? I do what I do because I am the most talented person in the world when it comes (laughs) to building people up and helping them. And I'm passionate about what I do, but they edited that last part. But so now I'm getting back to what I'm I'm saying. I think that my book is the best book in the world. Okay. That's 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 just the way I talk. Like I just told my daughter, you're the most beautiful girl in the world, except be like, there is a girl by the name of Kaya Gerber. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> that girl's ruining <laughs> all our lives. For those she of really you who don't know, that is Cindy Crawford's daughter, and she but, is something to look at. I just, she has the it, best face, but she's too skinny for me. She's, she's a little too skinny. Really skinny. Way too skinny. She's also she 16, so. is 
Cindy Jr. I'm I die over this girl. So true. Yeah. She is very yeah. pretty. But you know, the bottom line is you gotta be confident, whatever you do. No, but I'm just saying, you know how like I I'm a I'm I have a big personality. So when I have like a uh, like a if I'm having chips and sauce, I'm like, oh my god, this is the best sauce I've ever had. <laughs> Wait, oh my god, Siggy, that is nice. Nice. Siggy, you are me, I am that you. That is so Lauren funny. gets so mad at me because I think everything's the best, and she's like, not right. everything can be the best. Like some things can be okay, some things can be great, and I'm like, no, you're my best friend, and this, this is, is my best. this is the Aww. best song and the best movie. But Siggy, that's are you that's on? That's are you on? Um, a speakerphone right now? Yes. Can you take it off? So yeah. sorry. It doesn't sound very okay. good. Is that better? Oh, my, oh God. my God. God. So yeah, much a whole better. different world. Okay. So I'm saying, like, I, I'm a, I have a big personality. I love life. So when I, if I love you, I'm like, oh, my God, I love you more than anything in the world. <laughs> I People today, this is the hardest part about the show. They're like, you are so conceited. You're the most talented. And then, you know, like people are taking like jabs at me, like, you know, yesterday, Melissa's like, have you ever heard of Michael Jackson or Madonna? And I'm like, yeah, I don't sing or dance. <laughs> so, so anyway, go being on the show is amazing because I really do have the greatest book. I love it. I got on it because, you know, when you write a book, you have a storage unit and there's a lot of copies in that storage unit. I'm like, for me to get this book out to as many people as possible, that was my goal. And I reached my goal. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to the network. I'm grateful to the show. However, it is so stressful. It is beyond, you know, some people can handle it really, really well. I'm one of those people that I could admit I have a very tough time with it. Aww. Well, we want to have you on because we always talk about relationships. Ashley and yes. I have actually never had a boyfriend. Lauren has had multiple failed relationships, but is now <laughs> in a good relationship. Um, <laughs> and Siggy, the coolest thing about you is that you are a relationship expert. And I feel like a lot of our listeners always ask us, like, is it possible to be friends with your ex? And I think the craziest thing about your life and your story is that you were married for 10 years. And then when you got divorced, you were your ex-husband's matchmaker. Oh, my yes. God. Like, what? And he was the best man at my wedding. What? I don't know how so you did that. So here's how it happens. Okay. For all your listeners, if you don't have children with your ex, it is not... It is not required for you to stay friends with him. Yeah. Once somebody rejects you, once you get dumped, once you get, you're you over somebody, honey, move on. You don't need to. But when there are children involved, you have to bite your ego and understand that even when you get divorced, you're still going to be married in some, in, in some capacity. So I was married to a great guy, Mark Flicker, great, nice Jewish boy from Long Island, Ooh. from Brooklyn, Long Island. That's nice. Everything that. Yeah, it, everything that my mother would want from me on a piece of paper. He came from a great family. He was successful. He was adorable. Like my ex-husband is beautiful, beyond beautiful. Just a great guy. No, a class act, except for the one fact that he really didn't like the sound of my voice. I mean, it was just, <laughs> bottom line is, is that when you meet somebody and they don't think that you're the first word and the last word in the dictionary, it doesn't matter what you do it, 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 it you're, you're not in the right relationship that's it, it, it's a man should always love a woman a little bit more end of story that's what okay. our mom says wow it, it, but it's true because life is hard enough so you don't have to always be insecure in a relationship you should feel very secure in your relationship and i'm not saying that it should be 90 10 but a man should love a woman a little bit more. Once Mark and I had wow. children and we spent 10 years together, it was just obvious that, you know, we were not meant to be together. We were meant to be friends, but not married because we were doing things separately. So I said, listen, let's not get an attorney. Rip me off with whatever you think I could get. I really don't give a shit about the money. I want to have a good partner and I want to have a relationship with you for the sake of Joshua and Sophie. That's it. And a lot of my friends at the time were like, you're so stupid and did it. And you know what? I was rich where accounts. I got divorced. We stayed friends. And because we didn't have any, you know, I, I bit my tongue. And don't think it was easy. There was a period I hated his guts. I can't believe he didn't accept me for who I am. Why do I have to like be quiet and be a Stefford wife and go to my favorite restaurant, New York Prime, and not talk to the waiter and the bus boy. <laughs> and I want to go in the kitchen and have another piece of garlic shrimp, even though I'm allergic to it. I, I didn't give a shit. So, so, so it drove him crazy. And I'm like, you know what? I can't be with somebody who rolls his eyes at me. 
not for me. Some people think I'm too much. You do. You're not for me. Wait, so how did you become, how, like, you're not jealous? Like, how are you guys friends, I guess? was Yeah, how do you find another woman for him? Or if you did? Well, what happened was we moved back from, we lived in Boca Raton. And that's why I go there all the time. I still have a house there. And we moved to New York. And I moved to New Jersey. He's in Manhattan. And I was a matchmaker on Park Avenue. 300 Park Avenue. I work for a company called MQI, Model Quality Introductions. And I would have a book full of women and I would match people. And I found the love of my life 11 years ago, Michael Campanella. Aww. Yeah, he's the cutest thing in the world. And he actually loves the sound of my voice. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't want me to ever shut up. Um, So... I became Mark's matchmaker and I used to set him up on dates and people used to be like, oh my God, I love him. Siggy, I don't understand. I'm like, he's for you. He wasn't for me. Why? Because it starts at a young age. If you don't know your worth and you just accept anything that comes along and you you're, you take yourself like a doormat and you just allow people to treat you any way that and you don't stand up for anything, that's the kind of life that you're going to have. I could not accept somebody not loving the core and essence of who I was. Mm-hmm. And who who didn't claims, love that essence? Who are you referring to? I think to? that Mark, Mark didn't. Okay. Mark didn't. All right. Hold on, guys. I just want to stop for a second and talk to you guys about Beachbody On Demand because it is my jam. It is an online fitness streaming service, and it gives you unlimited access to a wide variety of highly effective world-class workouts And guys, it's just so easy. Like they also have extensive nutritional content and it's proven to help people achieve their health and fitness goals. It's definitely helped me with mine. I personally hate my arms and there's so many great arm workouts on there and there's like unlimited amount of workouts. They have this one called 21 Day Fix, which I personally love. And if you like yoga, they have this three week like yoga retreat also on there, which is really, really cool. Another reason why I love it is because I'm really not a good cook, which is another reason why I feel like no one's going to marry me. Um, But thanks to Beachbody On Demand, there you have over a hundred recipe videos. Um, And they have over a million members. So if that doesn't prove to you guys that this shit works then I don't know what will. It's amazing. So today our listeners can claim a free trial membership. All the I Don't Get It listeners will get it. And all you have to do, this is so easy, is take out your phone and text GET IT, G-E-T-I-T, to 303030. Again, that's GET IT, G-E-T-I-T, all caps together, to 303030, and you'll get full access to this entire platform for free. And I am done now, and let's go back to our conversation with Siggy. Okay, I want to know how you met Michael. <laughs> well, Michael I met, um, it was a Tuesday night. My best friend Jennifer said, let's go out. We went out to this place in Ridgewood, New Jersey. It was mm-hmm. called Blend. Now it's called Roots, and it was jazz night. And I always say, always put yourself out there. And he was there. Uh, my girlfriend had introduced me to him because she knew him from the town. I got to start going to jazz nights. It's, it's, I, not even jazz. it's anything that gets you out of your normal funk, your normal routine. I don't care if it's a photography class, ballroom dancing, pole dancing, whatever it is. If you start to now develop a Rolodex of new friends, and I'm saying Rolodex because I'm 50 years old. You guys probably <laughs> don't know what Rolodex is. But it's just doing something that you're not used to doing and breaking, you know, like popping that zit and just doing something completely out of the norm. And, and Ashley, we never do that. I never do that's that. Well, we, Lauren, I do it less than everyone else. I feel else. like I do it a fine amount, but then again, when I do do what it, what have we done I'm, that's out of the norm? I do a whole bunch of shit that's out of Not the work. norm. Not work. Work doesn't count. Like, what have you actually oh. done to put yourself out there? None, because Nothing. I just do it with my group of friends. Exactly. So I'm like, I'm not going to talk to anyone else. Yeah, we got to do exactly. something. This I got to like, go out fun. alone. Exactly. Um, well, so you're still match making, correct? No. No, you're I'm not? not? No. What about your nope. kids? Do you try to match with your kids? Um, no, because Sophie's 15. Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> that, start Sophie, yeah. like, that boy looks cute. Joshua is gorgeous. He's going to, he's at Penn State right now. And um he's dating Demi, who's um she just she's a Duke. Wait, <laughs> wait, Sigi, I wanna ask you about Michael because I read that he's a bald car salesman. Yes. And so, so- what I would like you to share or give us insight on is like, what advice do you have for like women 
who maybe feel like their husband has to look a certain way or has to be like a it's certain bullshit. type. Okay, okay, he, but, this guy was so not your type, right? Siggy, before you go no, into that. No, this guy, th- no, what, what, I sa- what, what, what I meant by saying he's a bald a bold car salesman is like this. You can't do online dating without spending, a, meeting somebody in person. Meaning a lot of women had come to me and I counsel a lot of women. They're six months with the same banter with the same guy. Now somebody could tell you that they are John F. Kennedy Jr. on paper. They oh, love their mother. They like to the hike, grill. bike and swim. They like to do everything and then you meet them in person and they're a schmuck. They're treating the waitress rude. They really can't stand the sight of their mother. Chemistry is a mystery. No online service can determine chemistry. You got to get off your butt and you got to meet somebody face to face to see if there's chemistry. So what I mean by Michael is when I went out, if I would have seen Michael's profile and it would say, yes, I own car dealerships, you know, I lost my hair and whatever it was, maybe I wouldn't have, I would have passed that over to find somebody with a full head of hair. When I met Michael in person, oh my God, my stomach was doing flips. I was doing aerials because his mannerisms, the way he, his hands, the the way he talked, um, he was humble. He talked about just things about him turned me on so much that 11 years later, I'm still jumping up for joy. Uh, I completely agree with that because the last guy that I, the last and only guy I actually really dated, I would have probably, I definitely swiped left on, uh-huh. on an app, which is why I think it's crazy. Yeah, that's true. Like, and just meeting people in person, like, it, I feel like it takes the magic away, like, meeting people online. Yes. And no, but, but it, chemistry, you, everybody has to understand, just because your girlfriends might not think the guy you're dating is hot, who cares? If he's hot for you, you're the one who's winning. See, everybody is so concerned about what other people think is hot, but what do they know? Nobody can really set you up with anybody because you have a certain type. There is no certain type. So when I say bald car salesman, it's like, oh, my God, Michael, every day, I'm so turned on by what this man look, looks like. I'm so attracted to him that here I am. I was married to a man who's, who's a beautiful man, but the chemistry wasn't there, and it is with Michael. Okay. So you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't go and judge somebody by their online profile. You have to actually get off the computer and meet somebody in person. I find myself to be very rarely attracted to people. Like, it comes around once in a blue moon. Like, that I want to just jump a guy's bones. And I don't... I wish I could get past it, but, like, it has got to be... Like, I have got to, like, really be obsessed with his face. I don't know Well, there's to nothing do. wrong with that. Yeah, but then, like, I, I don't well, know. Well, is there you... any way to make me feel, like, nope. more I'm interested? Tell you what's going to make you. How old are you? I'm 29. Okay, so you're 29. So sooner or later, you're going to have to grow up, and you're going to have to say this. I have a biological clock that's ticking. Well, that's if ticking. Interested... I know. Thank you. Okay, but it, right, but but what, what happens in life is it, when a doctor says to somebody, "You have thirty days to live," they start to take those thirty days more seriously. If somebody says, "Hey, listen, you know, next week you're going to go to a concert and you have to get into these jeans," you might be inspired to lose that weight to get into your jeans and not have, you know, your your muffin top hanging over. <laughs> your biological clock is ticking, so at some point you're going to have to say, "Wow, I want to meet somebody that I'm attracted to," and de- chemistry has to be there but maybe i shouldn't just emphasize so much on what this person has to look like yeah when you let yourself when you let yourself go and you have you know there's got to be a a, like like is something in you that says oh i got to start taking this more seriously because you could be walking down the street and you could be on your phone and not looking up and somebody could walk by and you could instantly feel something that's what chemistry is yeah i'll go if i find a guy attractive or like i some things about him i'll be like Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm not going to let this guy walk by. That's one all. good thing about Lauren is, yeah. yeah Lauren, oh, Lauren? Yeah. yeah. That is amazing that you do that. Because I'm like, I'm never going to see him again. What do I have to lose? I literally it's, think I went up to someone at a concert like a year ago. I go, I got to know who you are. Cause, and then he's like, I'm here with the backup dancer for Paula Abdul. And I'm like, sweet. I'm gonna- <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I love am that. so I scared people- to do that. Yeah, I was on the street the other day with my single girlfriend. I walked over to a bunch of guys. I'm like, excuse me, hi. I just have one thing to say to you. If I was not married to Michael Campanella, we somebody here would have a shot. And they're like, oh, you're so funny. I'm like, seriously, guys, is anybody here single? Because I've got the most beautiful woman. Like, I just talk to anybody. 
because there's nothing to lose. Right. So there's, true. You, you're going to walk away saying, okay, if he says I'm married, well, you know what? Your wife has great taste. I wish you nothing but health and happiness. Goodbye. Like, yep. you have nothing to lose. Hey, guys, you know that when it comes to dating, it's best to have clear skin so you're fully confident. So I like to use BioClarity to get my skin clear because it doesn't use any harsh chemicals. They also have this new moisturizer, which is called BioClarity Hydrate. It hydrates your skin with a lightweight, breathable, oil-free moisturizer that has been designed for even the most sensitive skin. This skin smoothie with Floralux softens and hydrates, and it also minimizes the appearance of pores. It even skin tone, texture, and reduces redness. BioClarity itself is a three-step system in which you cleanse, treat, and restore. So head over to BioClarity.com to get clear, refreshed skin. And our listeners will get their first month for only $9.95 plus free shipping. That is a $20 savings, and it comes with a 100% money-back, risk-free guarantee. But you need to enter our code, which is GETIT, G-E-T-I-T. So head over to BioClarity.com and plug in our code GETIT. Can't wait to hear the feedback on your beautiful new skin. Now back to Siggy. Let's go over the fact of like walking up to a guy if you think you're interested in him because I know that in your book, Write Your Own Fairy Tale, you talk about how to make the first five minutes with someone count. Yes. Oh. Yes. So, so how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, first of all, you don't talk about sex, politics, or religion. You're going to Dos Caminos. You're at the bar. <laughs> Somebody's at the bar right there because I only talk about that because chip salsa and guacamole is my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> so, um, and you have somebody there. I always say, because I'm very old school when it comes to love, but it's okay to compliment somebody. Excuse me, sir. You have, that's the most gorgeous tie. You know, compliment somebody. If somebody looks, if somebody's going to look at you and they're going to want you, want to talk to you, oh my God, that's so nice. What's your name? My name is Siggy. What's your name? David. Hi, how are you? What do you do? It, a lot of men today are intimidated by women. We're no longer where we were 50, 60 years ago. Women are now running the world and having babies and picking up their kids and going to volleyball. I mean, we're just so fabulous in so many ways that sometimes we can come across as intimidating. So it's nice to break the ice and compliment somebody. And in the first five minutes, you could find out a lot about somebody. A, find out if they're interested in you. B, find out what kind of person they are. I mean, it, it's so easy when you just like look up and start to talk to somebody and find out whether they, you know, they have a great relationship with their family, whether they, you know, what they do for a living, what their passions are. And you talk about things that that are lighthearted, like, you know, what do you do for a living? Where, do you, where have you been to? Have you traveled anywhere? Oh, really? You went to Bermuda? I've been dying to go. You, it just starts, you just, it's just easy flow. Not, hey, do you want to get married? And, you know, you think your sperm is still strong. You think you're going to have a lot of kids. How many kids do you want? What's, what do you want to name your firstborn? What kind of positions do you like to be in the bedroom? I mean, I personally like it from behind. Do you like it? <laughs> like, people get in and they get in too heavy. It should just be fun. And easy. Um, yeah. So I think that, you know, I had this lost man. I call him like my misconnection. It's been a year now. And I was at the sandwich place. The and ink, ink sack sandwich. Ink and, sack sandwich. Yeah. And there, I like felt chemistry and I just thought he was the hottest thing ever. And if I'd only just simply, like, he was talking to me about my dog. Like he was already talking. But if I had just been like, you have the best hair ever. Yeah. Like it would have That's changed it. everything. Yep. Yeah. Damn, because then he would have been like, oh my God. Does that mean she's interested? Yeah. And then that's like that's like a button to say go for it. Yeah. But, uh, oh, if know, we could just go back in time for you. In New York, you should see what the women in the South are like compared to the women in Manhattan. Oh, What's the difference. So, oh my lord, where do I begin? Over there, it's just like Lord, ah, steady my hand. No, everybody there is just, you know, friendlier. They talk. We're in New York. We're hustling. When I say New York, I mean Jersey, Connecticut, yeah, the tri state area. We're hustling. We want to get from one place to another. We were like, oh my God, I got to get here. And like, we're always in a rush. So we don't even really have our, 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 our calm faces on. That's why I say to people who are living, in, especially in the tri state area, do something outside the bu- bubble. Like I sent one of my clients to cooking class. She loves to cook. She's a horrible cook. Samantha goes to cooking class. Now, when you're doing something that you love, you're more relaxed. It's like almost like being sandwiches. in yoga. Yeah. Like if you want to go, yeah, 
go take a sandwich class. You're making a sandwich. You're more relaxed. And then all of a sudden you're meeting other people. And those people know they have a brother, they have an uncle, they have a next door neighbor, they have a boss. But when you are more relaxed and you're more light and flirty and fun, Oh, you so much there opp- opportunity is just right there in front of you. I'm just going to start getting wasted and walking around LA. <laughs> Do that. I'm just going to I'm just going to start every day with three bloody marys and I'll just go to work and we'll see if it happens. I'm, I'm not even How kidding. I'm going to try this. That's Maybe we should do that. Scenic. We should do an experiment where Naz and I get a little drunk during the daytime just Wait, like sit walk in LA. around. We can do it at the trading post because there's always so many hot so guys. Many yeah. Instead of young and restless, we'll be wasted and single in LA. Yeah, and then we'll just oh, compliment oh my God, that's a everyone. Title. Siggy, are you going to produce this? Are you going to make us famous? Um, uh, I, ha- I could do it. I could do that easy. So Let's do it. earlier, I think you said something about a relationship with your mother. If a guy doesn't have a great relationship with his mother, it's like a tall tale sign that he's not going to be a great like husband. Mm, very good question. No, 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 no. Okay. Nope. Because no. I, my mom's like, the relationship with his mother is everything, blah, blah, blah. So. No, nope. Some people have toxic. Listen, toxic people, everybody can relate to having toxic people in their lives. Everybody. Everybody. Some people have toxic mothers. You don't get a pass. You can't pick and choose your family. I have people come to me and say, my mother can't stand the sight of me. Uh I'm like, so why do you always sit next to her during Thanksgiving dinner? Sit next to the aunt that likes you. People have toxic people in their lives. We have to learn how to deal with toxic people. I'm on a show right now with toxic people. What do I do? I cry. I scream. I throw myself on the floor. I do everything because I don't want to be around them. It's very, very hard. So if somebody says to you, yeah, I don't really have a relationship with my mom, you'll you'll know from the way that they talk about it. Okay. I really wish I could have a relationship with my mom. My mom is somebody who's very toxic. She favors my younger brother. And every time I try to get close to her, all she does is nag me and nag me and nag me. That's coming from a person who's actually speaking truth as opposed to, yeah, I've got this great mom, but you know what? I tend to blow her off. She could be a bitch at times. I'm just not into the mother, the, the mother son thing. Right. Or, you know, you could tell by how somebody tells a story or their actions. You could tell a lot about a person if you get off your phone, stop looking down and actually have a conversation with somebody. But what about if your family doesn't like your significant other as a whole? Oh, my God. I had that. So when I first met Michael, I come from a very Jewish family. And my first husband, Mark, was Jewish. We raised our kids. They, you know, everything was great. And then when I met Michael, his, he's, he's, Michael's Jewish, but his, he, his last name is Campanella. So his father was Italian and his mother was Jewish. Yeah, that's our same dad. with our dad, yeah. Right. So they, we, they, he practices both religions. So my mom was like, Sigalit, you have Christmas tree? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, no, you, you're Jewish. I said, mom, I raised my kids Jewish. I'm in love with this man. And I will honor his traditions. So and during Christmas, I will have a Christmas Aww. tree decorated in Ralph Lauren. It's your choice. You don't want to come over? Don't come over. But I'm in a relationship. Decorated in Ralph Lauren. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, what, what do you want from me? I mean, this is, this, is, this is who I married. And at first, my mother was taken back. And now, oh, my God, she's like making matzo ball meatballs for him. I mean, she can't get enough of uh, Michael, but your your partner comes before anything. Okay. If your partner celebrates something, you have to honor who they are and their traditions as well. And the, and do you think this just applies for marriage or you think this applies for like boyfriend, girlfriend? Okay. I, I think, think it applies life for partner. everything. Life partner, 50-50. It takes it, only, oh, the only time that it's 60-40, 70-30, 80-20 is a man should love a little a woman a little bit more, but you got to work at your relationship. It takes two to tango. What do you think is so disappointing about the millennial culture and dating? Social media kills it. Kills it. I could write. I I write people on social media, and I'm like, are you kidding? Or, or, or you you can't. When you hear me, somebody speak to you, you understand where they're coming from more than, hey, do you want to go out? Yeah, I'd like to try Chinese food, or I'd like to go to uh, uh, I don't know. Dos Caminos, Mexican again. <laughs> no, I'm sick of Mexican. Why can't we just go some? Like you have to talk to somebody and say, hey, babe, listen, we've had Mexican three nights in a row. Let's try out this new place called, um, you know, Del Posto. I'm really in a mood for Italian. Talking to somebody is a lot better than texting somebody. Yeah, I never, I rarely text. I'll call just to ask like one simple question because I it can get misconstrued very easily. That's so true. Even about, Even about tacos. It's so funny. Even about... <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Siggy, I wish you could tell me why I'm single, but my therapist says, I never thought that I'd be like using that sentence ever in life. He says that with me, it really is bad luck. Like he says, I'm really not doing anything wrong, but I pay him really well. So maybe that's why he says that. He drives a really nice car. How old are you? I'm 27. And um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to tell you three things that you could be doing right now. Okay. Do you have an online dating profile? I do not. I don't, because I was just telling you before, I don't really like online dating. I like okay, meeting but, people but, organically. Okay. okay. So if you're going to go on that route, then you, you're going to be single at 47. So I'm going to explain to you what you need to do. Oh, God. You need to join an online dating service. Remember what I told you before not to rely on those online profiles. But what happens is, is right now, everyone, your, your age group is connecting through social media. Are you talking about apps too? Yeah, I'm, I'm just talking, no, not the Tinder, the hooking up crap and all that. What I'm talking about is um, um, not swipe to the left if you want me to meet you and just, you know, bang you or you want to just hook up. I'm talking about real online dating sites and your your dating profile should always be and you're, you guys are not going to like this. So get ready to throw something up in the air. You should Your dating profile should list that you want to meet somebody between 35 and you're 27. Yeah. Up to 37. Oh, that's what I date. Yeah, Good. but you're not average. You know, Seth, we've had a whole argument on this. We actually had a guy friend who is 31 on the podcast, and he was telling us that he's not ready to settle down until his upper 30s, and we were that we had a whole podcast dedicated to the topic. Yeah, guys are waiting so much longer. I like dating way older guys, but Siggy, Me the, too. But the last guy I dated was 36, and he was a child. Right, so that's he what... He wasn't that's a child. You, he wasn't ready for a relationship. He was extremely right. insecure. Because when, when somebody comes over to you, any man that gives you his age, automatically in your mind, deduct 10 years from that age. Deduct 10 years from that number. Oh, God. Women mature faster than men. It's not, I'm not cutting up men. I think men are the most fabulous creatures in the world. I'm just saying that they women really are. mature. <laughs> it, no, but, but, but maturity has everything to do with it. So if you're going to meet a guy, you know, what do guys want? They want sex and they want food and a woman who doesn't whine. Okay. But you meet somebody who wants that in their thirties, they're still going out. You meet somebody between 30, 35 and 45, they have more life experiences. I'm not saying that they're, all, they're going to be mature, but the chances of them saying, okay, you know what? I did the bar scene. I did that. I'm ready to settle down. I want my significant other. So I want to come home and cuddle. So I always tell people to date older. and They're like, no, I don't want to date older. I'm saying, yes, date older. Okay. What are the other two things we should be doing? Um, you should definitely. Definitely be going outside your circle and expanding your, 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 your network of friends. You should have your work friends. You should have your school friends. You guys are not in school, but you should have a totally, like if a doctor told you that you had 30 days to live, write down the things that you're passionate about and go out and do it. Volunteer at the animal shelter. Go, go, whatever it is that you want to do. You want to learn how to play the guitar? I don't, I don't know what your passions are. You know what you, you've always wanted to do, but you've got caught up in work or something that you did as a child that you want to, you know, recreate. You want to take art classes. You want to learn how to speak Hebrew or Japanese. Whatever it is that you want to do, go and take a class. Go. You'll meet new people. Learn new Hebrew people. now. You'll get the man <laughs> yeah. you want. Imagine Baruch Atah, Denai. I, in the city <clears throat> and just like become a Jew. Yeah. So, what was that? She, Lauren was joking, <clears throat> excuse me, and she was saying learn Hebrew. And I said, Baruch Atah, Denai. Adonai, Lehenu. Yeah. No, but, but, but you got the point. Like you meet new people. Yeah, so no, I got over, you. You'll come over and say, hey, Laura, you know what? I met this girl, Amy, in class. Okay. What about Amy? Well, Amy's got a brother and he's single. So I'm going to see, you know, you never know who anybody knows. So if you only stay in your bubble, you are really not utilizing the world. So you use social media, but you don't hang out on social media too long. And you make it a point to say, hey, I don't want to have dinner with somebody because if I don't like somebody and there's no chemistry there, I don't give two shits. I don't want to spend an hour with that person talking about nonsense. So true. That's you another topic. Like, yeah. Yep. How many dates do you give someone? How many dates do you give someone, Ziggy? Um, I think that you should give somebody three dates. That's what my mom says. <laughs> three dates. I know so many people who went on one date, and all you need is there used to be a song. You guys are too young for this. It used to be like the things that make you go, mm. Like it has to be just <laughs> subtle. Something that makes you go, mm, mm. Okay, that makes me go, mm. I'm going to give it a second chance. Second date. But what if he, he doesn't go, make you go, mm? What if he makes you go, okay? <laughs> Actually, that is so your word. Okay. Say, give him a second chance. 
But okay. And then what's the third thing we should be doing? Um. So so getting out there, getting out in the bubble. What did I say before? Get a dating profile. Um, older. Date older. Uh, getting out there, doing things you wouldn't normally do, and yep, then getting a dating things. profile. That's it. Oh, okay. Yes. Those three things will change your life significantly. It, you you have no idea it overnight. You already have three things. You are not going to accept dating anybody your age or younger. You're only going to date up. You're going to have an online profile. Ashley's so face looks so yourself. scared right now. I, 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 Ashley I loves boyish qualities. I'm, so. I'm fine with a dating profile. I actually would be open to that. I just really, um, I like boyish guys. I like them like young and fun and smiling. And, and cheaters and <laughs> cheaters. I don't even know yeah, where you're wait, getting wait, cheaters Ash, from. Ash, how old are you? I'm 29. Okay, you're 29. Okay, so... I'm not see, saying I, I'm trying I, I, to get, like, much younger than me. I'm just saying, like... Right. Around, but, like, but you know, four years boyish, of my age. Right, but there are boyish-looking men who are older. Like the Scott Bayo or... What was that? Party of Five? What was his name in, from Party of Five? Uh, Scott Wolf. Remember Scott Wolf? I don't yeah. know. You guys are a different generation. So your generation... Yeah, I'm like, is what's like the, Party of Five? No, I know yeah, Party exactly. of Five. You guys are a different generation. But what I'm trying to say is sooner or later, you're going to realize that all these young boys, what they want to do is they only want to hook up with you, Ashley. That's it. Like they, that, that's all that they're interested in. You're not going to get anything quality out of it unless you meet a very, very mature 29-year-old. But it's not fair to put that pressure on somebody who's 29 years old. Okay, so I have, not fair. I have a question. I have a question. Back in the day, like let's even just say like the 90s, 29 was like a, a very average, totally mature age to get married. What has happened in the past 20 years? It's just you just have to add 10 to that. So tonight, today, 39 is the average age. I mean, people are not getting married until their late 30s now because nobody's in a rush. I'll tell you. Why? Because relationships are difficult. So why rush into a relationship when you can have fun? That's exactly so what that's my what, big says. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's that's what you do in your in your twenties. Except for women, got am I allowed to curse or not? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. This is so, HBO. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. So women got fucked out of that whole thing. Yeah. Why? Because we have biological clocks, yeah, and we right. have to produce kids. All right. Well, Siggy, I have a question for you because, and I know this is kind of the opposite of what you're preaching now, but I read somewhere that you kind of talk about it in your book. So Ashley and I and Lauren, but mainly (laughs) Ashley and I are like extremely busy, like literally like different job, different gig every day. We are girl bosses. (laughs) (laughs) Like we're just exhausted. And I have been on seven dates since I've gotten my heart broken and haven't had a spark with any of those seven guys. And I personally am just taking a break from dating, and I th- I think that's okay. But it is okay, right? That's okay, right? It is, it, listen, it's okay to be take a dating detox. Absolutely, you should. You no nobody wants you to go out on a date when you're not confident or not, or if you're not ready enough. Because what you're going to do is that energy in you is going to be like a Debbie Downer. If if somebody if I want to give Joshua spinach and he doesn't want to eat spinach, his face is going to be like, leave me alone already. I don't want to have fucking spinach. Meaning you've got to be ready to go out into the world. Yeah, I don't want to have, have fucking spinach, everyone. Everyone's like, you got to yeah. get out there. And I was like, I, I really. I really no, no, don't no, want no. to right but, now. <laughs> but you can't get too comfortable. Yeah. You can't get too comfortable. Sooner or later, you can't get too comfortable and you have to make sure that you're not making it a habit because you are still hurt over that one that hurt you. Oh, no. You I'm not can't... hurt. I'm just busy as fuck. <laughs> okay. So if you're busy as fuck, that I, if, you, if you're really busy as fuck, then you could stay busy as fuck. But let me just tell you something. Don't get too comfortable in that because that busy as fuck is never, ever going to give you in 10, 15 years from now. One thing that we can't control in this world is time. Mm -hmm. Time is of the essence. You guys are in your prime now. The choices that you make are so important now. Can I say one more thing? Um, My dad has always been like, you know, once you're like happy and doing what you're supposed to do, like career wise, then it'll just come to you like your person. I like to think that. (laughs) She goes, no, no, I like to think that too. Your dad, what your dad's saying is like a 
he is there's truth in it because he wants you to be happy and passionate in what you do but it's almost like you can't you can't sit on your ass and wait for somebody to come on their white horse to say excuse me um i know that you're here and you're single and i'm you got to put yourself out there okay so you You've really got, you, think that active dating really ups your chance of finding <laughs> your person of course it does. I know, I know, oh me, my like, god i have a like yes. a, but like it makes it it's a question because think about it like what are the odds that, like, this guy that I, like, decide to have dinner with is going to be, like, my person out of, like, all the people that I interact with on, like, a weekly basis? Um, the, the chances are, v- like... Higher than yeah, if you did they're, really, they're higher, higher than, than if you did it. Yeah. Let me just ask you something. If you don't know how to bowl and every and, and twice a week you go bowling, do you think by the sixth week of bowling you're going to be able to be a pretty, you know, decent bowler? Well, yeah. Like, I understand the... Um, the significance the co- well, think about of the getting good at dating. Put it into anything. You start a new job. You're not the same person on day one that you are on day 60. You start dating twice a week. Once a, Start out with once a week. That's four dates a month. You become a better dater. It's a numbers game until you meet somebody that you have chemistry with. You can't go your whole life without not having chemistry with somebody. But if you're going to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go on seven dates a year and you're going to take a chance on those seven guys having chemistry with them, then why? Why? Dating is going out and just getting to know somebody and taking the pressure off of it that it's just a friend. If there's no chemistry there, if there's no chemistry there, okay, so he owns a vineyard and then next year all three of you are going to his vineyard, but he's not a good kisser and you have no chemistry (laughs) with him. But guess what? He could have a friend and his friend could have a brother. Like, why? You guys have no children at home. Nothing is holding you back. Yeah, you're busy working, but you you could do whatever you want. You don't have to be home. You don't have to take the kids to school in the morning. Like, this is your time to do it. Right. Oh, I know. I got to get out there. <laughs> you have a boyfriend, Lauren. I, I know. think Mass. I'm so Let's... down with this, Siggy. I just, and I have done it. I just, it's just emotionally like draining. But even if you do have a boyfriend, you still get in a rut and then you still are kind of bored. Yeah. Um, well, what about when you get comfortable with a boyfriend when you know it's not your long term person? Yeah, and you gain 50 pounds. What happens then? <laughs> What about the significance of wasting time with someone that you know you're not going to end up with? We wait. We all do it. You, we all do it, and you have to give yourself a break. There's no one perfect out there who hasn't done that. I will never I, be with someone I, that I don't see myself with. Forever. I don't think so either. I don't even think I'd be with somebody for a month. I think that's I why Ashley so. and I are single for. A, we've been single our whole lives. I agree. Lives. Because like we just yeah, don't want to. We date look for, for the husbands. Sake of being we don't look fun. For yeah, we don't think yeah. it's just fun. Well, there's there's a happy medium, but I totally understand being with somebody just for the comfort that you're used to it, and it's just such a pain in the ass. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to do this now, and he's not gonna. There, there's there's such great things about relationships that when you don't, when you're not in a relationship, it's it's just so much better to be in a relationship and the right one, and you can't you can't give up on that because once you don't see it for yourself, it's not gonna come to you. Like, you have got to get angry and say, why her and not me? Like, push, you got to push yourself. You have to really want it that when somebody says you can't have it, you're like, fuck you. I will have it. That's the way I was. When I was like, I'm not going to be living with Mark Flicker in Woodfield Country Club in a beautiful, in a beautiful. Oh, you lived in Woodfield? I lived in Woodfield. I was a member. I'm still Siggy, a member of the Siggy, Siggy, yes. one of my first jobs was the hostess at the Terrace. Oh, my God. That's my favorite that is place. so funny. The Terrace I is love- the club, the restaurant in there. Yes. Yes. I would have and to write wait, down everyone's member number. And then, I don't know. Yes. I'm so bad with years and ages. I'm not like 20, Ashley. 20, I was like 16. Eight. How old was I when I was 16? What year? Oh, wait. No, I graduated oh, high school in 08. It was when I was in, oh. in high school. So probably like 06 or 07. Okay, so you, you were there when I was a member. Oh Wait, my God, that's, that's so funny. Crazy. I probably set you at a table. Do you go on family <laughs> night on Sundays? No, no, no. I went on family night, but I went every single day to the clubs with the girls. Oh, girl, we we've met before. We have, we have definitely met before. There was somebody by the name there. There was a server there. His name was Pierre, who was my favorite one. Yes, he's black. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love Pierre. <laughs> Is this so is so crazy. random and literally so many people are listening and don't give a fuck but about I give a fuck. this is so weird do you know mr ash he was like one of the oldest members there why does he sound so familiar and never mind all right moving on i have a huge okay. question um yes. i maybe this has to be our last question uh, yeah this so. is my last question make it good Ash. oh it's a good one <laughs> we need tricks 
to attraction. Um, I tend to friend zone. I never friend zone myself up until the past couple years. And I think I learned to really accept myself. And I'm just very myself with guys that I even think are really cute, like pretty quickly. So I, I keep friend zoning myself. Um, and then conversely, I can also like get really nervous around guys that I like initially. And I just, I cannot find the good balance. Okay. So the question is what? Like, what, do you what have any question? tricks to like making a guy instantly interested besides the way you look? Or, and Ashley also wants to know <laughs> how to not be nervous. And I don't think I get nervous anymore. I think I'm oh, done You with just that. told her. I know, but I'm thinking back in a couple of years. So and I'm like speaking to how old not self. be friend zoned. Okay, so that that all the, the, that's chemistry. You got to just own who you are. You have to just always own who you are, and you have to act as if. I had a trick. Every time I would get nervous, or every time something would happen to me, I would act as if I was Jack. What would Jackie O do in this situation? How? What would Reese do in this situation? Somebody that you would buy. Wait, that's funny. What I used they- to say, "What would Reese do?" Because I, I always think that she right, presents such a herself cool chick. well. Okay, so that's that's. I would always say, what would you do? You have one time to do this dance. I'm trying to make you like angry about it. There is no reason why the three of you should not be with the lids to your pot. There's no reason for it. There's no, there's nothing that's told. There is no reason for it. So what I also like to do is, and this is like, take yourself out of your situation. Go visit the fifth floor at the children's hospital. All these kids who have cancer who are not going to be here who are never going to get married who have these terminal illnesses it breaks my heart every time my, my kids start to get like a little bit over the top i'm like get, get your ass in the car we're going to the to the hospital to do charity work or something like that you appreciate your life more when you pop the bubble and get out of your own way you yeah. appreciate and say god this person is not going to have these opportunities who the hell am i to be insecure Aww, talking to this is so yeah. this is really good advice yeah who am I? Like, I'm trying to make you, like, angry. Because every time people would throw things at me, like, Siggy, come on. You have kids. Th- those are kids. They're baggage. Yeah, maybe Louis Vuitton bag. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Baggage. Those are my babies. Any guy would be lucky to have me, Sophie. And you. I always play reverse psycholo- psychology. I always see the glass that it's half full. Anybody could give me anything. I'll slap it right out of the ballpark. I don't give a shit. My life, my rules, I'm going to do it my way. When I leave this world. I'm not going to sit on that rocking chair with my dentures and my 19 spanks or my diapers on and say, you know what? I should have been intimidated when that freaking whatever it is. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm going to go for it. You have to think of everybody else who doesn't have the they don't have the opportunity. I mean, think about like recently all these people in Vegas, they went to a country concert. And they're freaking, there's 60 people who are dead for no reason at all, but going to hear country music. Like there's fucking sickos in this world. Your life can end in a, in a heartbeat. Live your life to the fullest. Don't let anybody hold you back. So when you get into that mode where you're sweating or you're insecure, you're doubting yourself, you go back and you think about these things, you'll put, it'll snap you right out of that situation. I think we should end on that fantastic I note. I think that was that great. Was great. Yeah. <laughs> Siggy, you're amazing. Where can we I find you, you on the on the little screen? What time oh, and what channel? Every Wednesday night at nine o'clock on channel. Bravo. I got Bravo, the best network in the world. It really Bravo. is. It, <laughs> it really is. is. It's a good network. one. And yep. shout and out to ABC. <laughs> yeah. And just so now it's just to you know. Yeah. Ready for this? I'm ready. So th- I know you guys didn't watch the first episode yesterday, but I took the girls to Boca Raton. Okay? I know. I know this. Okay. And then I set it up all in Boca and I had New York Prime. I walked in. I made all my friends wait three hours at New York Prime. I walked in. Hi, everybody. People were like, oh, my God, does she really walk into a restaurant like that? No, but I do walk into New York Prime is my favorite restaurant yeah. for over 20 years. It's bomb. And I took them to the Boca Beach Club and I took them to my house. Yes. And it was just, Boca is just fabulous. So it really one is. day I hope that 
Yeah. I, I love that you're like the face. It's like you and Ariana Grande. You're like the face of Boca Raton. We gotta go to the <laughs> we gotta go to the Boca Raton resort together one day and just listen. Lay I'm out. a member there, so I'm yes. inviting all three of you there. Oh, oh we're, yes. we're going. Yes. We'll How see- about that? Okay. All right. I'm and- there every month. You're always invited, and even if I'm not there, you can use my membership card. Go there and have a blast. There's nothing like the chopped salads that they serve you in these containers that they shake for you on the beach. You're sitting in your chair with the bar right next to you. Yeah, it's the it fucking greatest. Insanity. And then in the yeah. resort, there's a serendipity with like the best milkshakes ever. Oh, hell yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Oh, they have serendipity the best everything. Yeah. All right. Well, Siggy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's I can't believe we got a housewife on the podcast. Know, we're moving great. on up, guys. <laughs> um, I know it's your second season, so we're so excited to see what happens. And uh, good well, luck with everything. And <laughs> yeah. maybe Ashley and I will go to jazz night tomorrow or something. Do something, but you guys, seriously, you're so lucky. Just look at your positions. You're so, you're just so lucky to be where you are. And I truly, really hope that I meet you in person one day, if not in New Jersey, then definitely in Boca Raton or LA, either one. I just we have ties there. everywhere. We have yeah, ties yeah. In all three places. <laughs> Our parents grew up in Bergen County. I was born wow. there. Yep. Wow, we're in Bergen County. Well, I was technically born at pa- in Patterson Hospital, but um, wow. we lived in Hackensack when I was born. Okay, so I'm right next to Hackensack. I'm yeah. in Tenafly. Beautiful. Oh, well, great. Our so grandma cool. lives in Dumont. <laughs> Beautiful. She's 94. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she wears 19 Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Bubby. I wear two now. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, bye, Have bye. a good night. Thank you so much, ladies. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right, Ashley, I'm dying to know what your thoughts yeah, are because I feel like you had so many faces during that. I did. Um, I I have a lot of faces. I wonder. You have seven smiles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. What is that? Oh, it's, it's from, from what David 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 I just laughed, so I wasn't left out. out. I guess I don't know if I should say my honest feelings. What? Um, you what? still want to date you, children? You're gonna say your dishonest no. feelings? No. Um, I feel like some of it might be a little outdated. Some... I don't know. I don't know. Cause I, I think, think she's spot on. I think personally. she's got it. I, I really think we're all like, in denial. Really, I really yeah. like the last thing. Like, it really makes me feel like, oh yeah, my what god, the fuck if are you're you worrying at about sack that? and you're like embarrassed to like say like, hey, here's my number. Right. You can think about everything else in the world. Yep. Right. Yep. I love that. Love it. Um, I I don't think I'll ever be sold on dating anyone older than thirty six. I think that's fine if that's. Your I think preference. if you date a thirty-three-year-old, that's even proper. But I think, Lord, of course, I date a thirty-three-year-old. That's just not far off than thirty-five. Then I'm yeah, talking. Really I could not think about dating a thir- a thirty-eight-year-old. Are you fucking joking me, Ashley? Ashley, that's not. I d- I'm. I know, but I don't like that. I do not like. Then that that's vibe. fine. I think that's your personal preference, but I don't think she's wrong in saying that those that's, men. I like when she said add ten years. I literally was like, "Yep, that yeah. is so true." Yeah. Like any guy you meet, like. Any 38-year-old you meet, it's almost like he's really 28 to 31 in his mind. Now, I've found now, in my personal experience. Exactly. I, just, I still get pissed about the generational thing. Yeah. That annoys yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. And, and it's not fun, but I think we do kind of have to adjust. Like, I want to grow up with Why someone, you to be move honest. The south I want to grow up with someone. You can still grow up with someone. Hey, my parents are six years apart. Aren't your parents years apart? No, two. two and a half. Okay. My parents are six years apart. And that's like literally, it's fine. It's like you can't even tell. They're both old to me and wrinkly. Go to the south; you'll find someone who wants to marry. No, I'm too old for the south now. Huh? You're too. You'll old get the for divorce the south, south yes. southern guys. Why? Oh, because everyone's married already. Yeah. Oh. Um. Anything else that I was like, I'm not sure about. I mean, obviously, I cannot even fathom going on one date a week with somebody new. Yeah, you actually I don't you've done that before. Any more friends in my life. It's not a friend, it's like a potential partner though. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What do you mean? Because she was like, Oh, you have f- if you don't work out, then you have another it. friend. I'm like, oh, I don't need my network being any bigger. I mean, I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous. I said this when we were in Vegas. I was like, guys, I think you are my last group of a <laughs> friend making. Like I right. know it sounds horrible. I'm just like being Ashley I right now. I'm just saying like something that I think probably sounds no, horrible. I, don't think it I really bad. have very little interest in like making a lot of 
a lot more like close circle friends right now because I have a really good circle. Right. And I don't think that's what I don't I think, think she's saying bad. I don't think she's saying it doesn't sound bad because I think most people I'm exhausted like have their socially friends. is what I'm saying. I'm exhausted socially and I think I'm going to like not like my life as much. Right. And I'm not going to like be as happy of a person if I find myself forced to be in more social situations. No, I don't think she's saying like you have to go out and make new friends. I think like when she used that example, like, oh, I met this girl, Amy, in class. I think what she's saying is not become Amy's best friend and invite her everywhere. And now Amy is a new person in your life you have to be responsible for. She's saying go maybe get a drink with Amy or ask Amy about her brother. So it's not like make new friends. It's like, you know how we're like at clever, like maybe just there's someone at clever that has a brother Amy about her brother. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just a matter of expanding. You know what I mean? And you have a lot of group of friends, Ashley. You have friends from Virginia, you have bachelor friends, you've like you got a lot. You got a group. I just want it to naturally fall together. I really don't want to make an effort. That's what stressed me out about that conversation, is because like I feel like it's it. it it requires so much effort. Like it's a second job to go find a husband. I don't have time for a second job. And that's why I told her that I took a break and I completely agree. But I, I know I completely agree. But like when the fuck is our break going to be over? When is your break going to be over? It's, it's not like, like it's slowing down anytime soon. Right, but you, we can't, we literally can't not put an effort towards the one thing we want the most. Like, yeah, we want to like be hosts and like do all this stuff, but we also really want to find love, right? Like, I think that's number one for you and I and Lauren. So think about it. Like, if you want to be skinny, you have to work out all the time. So it's like you have to give it some attention. No, if you want to be skinny, you have to stop eating as much. Another <laughs> thing that I have to stop doing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to do a combination of both. I'm but stressed your the fuck fine. out now. That conversation stressed me out. I was, like, literally telling Lauren yesterday. I was like, do you know how lucky we are? Do you know how wonderful our lives are? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and now I'm so like, lucky. now I'm realizing that, like, I have another job to do. I think that's, you know what's funny is when she was talking... A part of me was like, that's why everyone wanted Siggy to meet Ashley. To stress because, Ashley out. No, to, to just to tell light Ash- a fire under my ass. Kind yeah. of in a way to tell you like, all right, this is kind of what you got to start doing. Maybe. I don't know. Would Maybe. you disagree, Lauren? Disagree? What I would far rather prefer is literally can I get drunk with you on a Saturday and like go around and be like, you're hot. You're hot. Here's my Listen, number. Yeah, but I'm don't so be like down. a seventh grader walking on the mall like I used to do. Be like, you're hot. <laughs> you know, you got to be like, hi, like. You have great this. Uh, where do you live? Uh, you single? <laughs> Not if like somebody came up to me and did that. I'd be like, please get the fuck away. Guess you what? Wouldn't. They're guys. Guys don't fucking care. But Ashley, you wouldn't if you had chemistry. I think this all comes down to having chemistry, right? Like you just have to spark with someone. So, I think like, that you, you should go to the spark. training post, not drunk, and just talk <laughs> to humans because you're adults. Yeah, cuda. you're, you're cudas. You adults. I feel like I feel like a lot of the guys at trading posts actually go with their girlfriend. They do. It's That's a, true. It's How like let's buy but the tiki heads. I am down <laughs> to take two shots of Casamigos tequila. Shout out to okay. Casamigos. I love you. And uh, and get an empanada and sit in the grass and look at and then hot talk people. to each other only. And then maybe maybe you and I can dare each other. We could be like, all right, Ashley, I don't you like go dares. talk to that guy. Yeah. No, because then I'll, I'll then play. The, Lauren will make us do it. Yeah. Should we vlog this? Yes. Vlogging's like a thing. I'm going to wear like a little I don't camera. Think I like sure. vlogging. I don't think I, I think the younger generation loves vlogging and I don't hate it or love it. I'd be down to try it out. I'm like, you guys don't need to know this much about my, I really entertain you that much. My life really entertains you that much. I mean, that's your reality TV star. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get like in my instance, maybe, but that's weird too. I mean, I can see if I'm with my bachelor friends. All right. So what is our big takeaway from today? So obviously I'm a little bit angry right now, but I just think it's like I'm grumpy. I think she said a lot of great things. I don't think you're angry. I just think think you just, you don't want to do all this stuff right now. I don't want to do any of it right now. I really don't want to. I love the way that my dad used to say, or he was just like, stop worrying about it. Stop worrying about it. Because I used to He was like, what are you, like, his concern is not you getting married. His concern is you making money. So why are you listening to that? No. Dad is concerned about me getting married. Dad is so concerned about that. Oh, Ashley, I always wanted to ask you this. Why? What was I watching the other day? Or maybe I had a dream. Would you be annoyed if Lauren got married first because you're We older? talked about this a couple days ago. On the podcast? No. no, not on the podcast. I wasn't there. Yeah, you were. When? Oh, we were with Lizzie. That was well, not Weren't me. you there? No. Where were you with Lizzie? Oh, we were driving around the car with Lizzie. 
And you're like, is here? it annoying? No, she said a couple of days ago. She meant a couple of weeks ago. I, mean, oh, oh, weeks ago. I was so confused. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, of course I would be. You would be. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Fucking yeah. Are Damn. you joking me? I think Lauren would feel guilty about it. You'd feel guilty if you got married. I wouldn't feel Lauren. guilty. I think you'd feel bad for me. Okay, I'm not gonna like postpone my wedding because you'd feel sad. <laughs> that would really? be that I would be like the would ultimate act of kindness. I think you would do that for me. Um, but first of all, my wedding and my marriage is gonna be so subtle that you won't even notice it happens. You're gonna elope, and I'm gonna be yeah, so pissed. It's gonna be like an I'm gonna elope be so situation. Mad. I feel like you're gonna call me and be like, "Nah, it's just got married." I'm gonna be like, "You fucking bitch. yeah." I'm like, "We can have a pizza party later, uh, as long as it's Domino's." <laughs> yeah, yeah. She would do that. Or Taco Bell. Uh, all right, let's get pizza. <laughs> can we get pizza now? No, I'm going next door to get dinner. Oh, no, I'm so hungry. Uh, Lauren, can you make me a grilled cheese? I don't have any of those accoutrements. Great. All right. All right. Well, well you guys, I, I want to clarify. <laughs> we were just talking normally. What do you I, mean? No, this, this is, is what we're what doing. Guys, like this just so you more. know, this is, I, I hope you guys know we're so real and raw. Like, like, just so you guys know, I get so scared that guys that I talk to are going to listen to the podcast. That's how much I love you guys because I just say it anyway. Because yeah. <laughs> if they listen to it, I'm look, fucked. Look, and I like saying, you know, I want to hang out with her in real life. And I really appreciate all the information she gave. I, I just she's feel super right, stressed Ashley. right now. I think she's right. I think you should just let it marinate. Also, guys, I'm so I'm kicking myself in the butt. I didn't tell her about Heartbroken Anonymous. Uh, I feel like yeah. maybe that's not so much her wheelhouse, but I feel like we can like, tell oh, her at the cool. Boca Raton whatever resort. Yeah. It is. All right, guys, which, by the way, I'm having a Heartbroken Anonymous meeting this Thursday in L.A. So, guys, please come. It's at 8 o'clock, and it's free at Open Space. You can go to heartbrokenanonymous.com for more info if you're heartbroken or your friend is. And sometimes and you live in there's LA. donuts. And I bring donuts. And also, we really, really need a good ghosting story. Just so you guys know, we tried two ghosting stories last week, um, but they didn't end up working out. We weren't able to get in touch with the ghoster. So please continue to send your ghosting stories to info at heartbrokenanonymous.com or DM me on Instagram at Naz Perez. And I should also say that, like, it's funny because Nick Vial is 37. Yeah. And I would never, yeah. You would never think he was 37. I would never think he was yeah, 37. Yeah, exactly. Ashley... See, you're already letting it marinate. High five. I'm so Good proud marination, of you. Actually. Guys, we're making little progress. And obviously, on her. if I didn't know him and I saw him on the street, I'd be like, whoa, he's yeah. hot. Yes. Exactly. There you go, Ash. And I'd be into it. Good job. And then I'd later find out that he was 37. And I'd be like, oh, wow, shocking. Okay. Age really doesn't matter to me. I don't know why. It just doesn't. Doesn't either. Unless you're younger than me, then it matters. All right, friends, subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends about it. Tell us what you don't get. Follow me on Instagram. Follow Lauren Ashley. And uh, we love you. Love Thank you. you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. I don't get it. Podcast.